Hi, everyone. We made it to the end. I hope you all had a great Vulcanize. Um, we're going to hopefully end this with a successful demo, although it's recorded. I apologize uh, since uh, we don't have a live application here. But um, yeah, so uh, I work with uh, Samsung Austin Research uh, Center in Texas, and uh, I'm going to introduce you to the profiler we've been working on uh, in conjunction with uh, Google and Lunar G. Um, we're very excited to work with both partners uh, and, and bring something uh, we hope is very useful for everybody. Um, really, the question becomes, why do we need a new profile? I think hopefully everyone here kind of understands. Uh, Vulcan, Android, as we know and just heard in the previous, uh, uh, or the Android ecosystem itself, uh, is pretty fractured, right? There's um, uh, lots of tools, lots of different platforms, and uh, there's kind of a lack of consistency amongst IHVs. Um, when we talk about... Uh, and when we talk about, you know, when we talk to game developers, what we find is that um, the the kind of fracturing of or fragmentation of tools uh, leads them to uh, sometimes use a non-Android platform uh, as that sometimes doesn't even support Vulkan natively uh, to um, optimize their games, and that doesn't lead to a very optimal Android experience. Um, so what's the solution, right? We want to develop a, a hardware agnostic tool for all hosts and targets, uh, particularly for Android. Uh, to do that, we are going to leverage uh, industry standard tools, uh, Google's Profeto um, and Liturgy's GFXR Reconstruct as our uh, initial platform uh, to build on. Right, these things are uh, both open sourced, and um, you know we we can uh, allow help the community kind of uh, expand the and the capabilities by by utilizing these types of tools. Um, so, who are we targeting with this platform? Uh, we're targeting obviously. Uh, you know, app developers, game engine developers, uh, and OEM developers, right? Uh, we want, uh, we know that as you get closer to the OEM hardware, uh, the need for additional data uh, becomes greater. Um, and potentially some of that may not be exposable to uh, uh, end customers. So we're working with uh, trying to build a platform that we can kind of have that flexibility uh, for, for all developers in the ecosystem. And I'm just going to jump right into the demo. Um, I, I hope most of you know what a profiler is, so I'm not going to go too much into what is a profiler. Uh, so we'll just don't kind of jump into features here. Um, and like I said, this is a video, so I might pause it a couple of times if uh, it runs faster than I can talk towards it, but um, we'll try our best. It does take a second to move. Um, this is the, the welcome screen. Uh, you do get like your, your recent project list. Um, the project list is on the left uh, for what's open or uh, included in it. Um, and is it actually running? Maybe not. Right again. Should see the mouse move here in a second. There it goes. Okay, so um, here is our uh, new, you know, new profile configuration window. Um, it's pretty standard. Uh, we have a common uh, framework, so we can add additional data sources. It's it's flexible, extensible, um, and uh, the first two we've obviously implemented, as I mentioned, was uh, Profeto and GFXR data sources. Uh, we have a common data source essentially that kind of uh, handles coordinating, capturing data from different uh, sources. And um, here you can kind of set up whether or not you want to do like uh, what application you want to want to trace uh, any sort of extra parameters and whatnot, um, and uh, like how you want to capture, whether or not you want to do manual captures or uh, duration-based captures or frame-based captures here. And then uh, the the other, like for each data source, uh, we have separate configurations. So here's the Profeto one, and you can see there's an enable flag at the top. So if you don't want to collect Profeto data, you want to just collect GFXR, you can do so. Um, this is the, you know, for, for our device, this is uh, the counter list and um, there is support for advanced features. So if you are a Profeto expert, you can modify the configuration directly. Uh, GFXR captures. Um, I think this may be the easiest way to capture a GFXR right now. Uh, just you click, you set that up, it has all the features and you can and do a capture. Now I didn't show the capture bit because it's uh, it takes a little bit obviously, um, but once you get a capture uh, and it pulls it down, this is kind of what you see at the beginning, uh, which is your Profeto view. Um, and uh, additionally, we've added, uh, because we can support capturing GFXR at the same time, and GFXR provides the ability to retrieve data, uh, like frame information from the, the running application or the, the trace, um, we can actually build this interactive timeline at the bottom, uh, showing all of the data from the frames. And the blue bar there allows us to kind of scope the view uh, to what we're looking for. Now, if you have a specific region of your capture that you care about, um, we've provided this ability where you can select these frames and you can create a slice. And that slice is like a filtered view into that same data set. 
Um, so it's not generating another data set. It's, it's the same data set stays loaded. Um, so here we would get a, you know, zoomed in view of that, uh, that trace that there's for that frame. Um, we've uh, worked quite a bit to enhance uh, Perfetto itself. Um, We've uh, we we know that uh, like the counter tracks, for example, are very small. Um, they kind of are that you know when you collect a bunch of them, they're kind of disorganized. Uh, so some of the features we've added is the ability to create a combo tracks, which it'll get to here in a second. Again, I apologize. Um, yeah, double clicking on the timeline does zoom into a frame of interest. Uh, so there's that as well. Um, here we go. So so here if. Uh, uh, we've also set up um, basically the we've we've identified the tracks that you probably care about the most as a GPU developer. Here, those are all those the GPU counters I was talking about. Um, you can pin those, uh, but we've pre-pinned a bunch of stuff. And then if you wish to create combo tracks, you can see here um, I'm I'm creating one that basically uh, stacks the vertex and fragment shader busy signals um, onto the same track. Um, and then those show up like this. And uh, you can see I've created a couple other ones. Some of them for L uh, memory caches. Uh, you know, cache hits and misses. Um, we also added the ability, which we think was kind of missing from Perfetto, that uh, we can now expand these tracks uh, as needed to be able to see the information. And you'll see that here in a second. Um, it makes it very easy when you are working with combo tracks to be able to actually look at the data that's inside of it. So you can adjust these as you need to. Um, because also that we collect GFXR data and Perfetto at the same time, we inject additional tags into the Perfetto trace uh, that allow us to synchronize the GFXR data with the um, Perfetto data itself. So actually, I'm going to pause that for a second. Um, so what you were seeing was a summary, uh, a summary performance page that allows us to um, basically slice out the Perfetto data that's uh, relevant to uh, a given frame. Um, or actually down for, for our device uh, down to the subpass level. Uh, we have a very articulated uh, GPU queue track, so um, we can get additional information. Uh, we're going to try and work with other IHVs to, to also improve that uh, articulation, so possibly get more information as well. Um, this here is our, uh, what we find is actually uh, a lot of developers, uh, when you're doing performance analysis, you still, you know, like AGI didn't really give you, uh, you had to use like two separate versions of AGI kind of, um, the, the frame profiler and the system profiler, and they weren't necessarily the same data set. So uh, trying to like determine once you found your performance issue, where, uh, what, what, what the cause was in the, the Vulcan command stream um, becomes difficult. Uh, with this sort of model, uh, since the data is tied together, uh, we can actually provide some uh, frame profiling capabilities just based off of the data, the same data set. Uh, so once you find your your uh, tr problem frame or problem area, you can jump to what the command stream was at the time of that queue submit or draw call. Um, here, uh, we can see also that GFXR provides us uh, a bunch of data, uh, such as um, intermediate draw frame uh, images, and um, the the our uh, pipeline view. It, it filters this information based on where you have your current selection at. So um, the, the top section here is the uh, command arguments, or the currently selected command, so uh, the draw that I've selected, um, the, the uh, command arguments that are associated with it. The second section here is the uh, currently bound pipeline and the dynamic state that's associated with it. And the global section is actually a filtered uh, sec view of all of the Vulcan state objects and their life cycles that are at the time of the queue submission uh, that this draw is selected under. Uh, we provide links so you can jump around the data quickly. And you can see here that uh, we have all the configuration states for this pipeline that was selected. Um, you know, and, and it includes, includes like descriptor sets as well and things like that, things you would want to really do investigations on. And then, of course, we have uh, for each pipeline type, um, we have each of the state shader stages uh, shown here. Um, this is the vertex shader. Uh, this was the Sponza sample or what, Sponza scene um, using the subpass uh, subpasses sample. Um, so what we get from this draw call is some of the geometry back, uh, everything from the uh, input attributes. And uh, we render that in a 3GS context inside of this window. And we can do stuff like you know show it in wireframe or uh, normal rendering or smooth rendering or what have you. Um, we will continue expanding this functionality as well um, based on different pipeline types and, and data that we can pull down. Um, for the uh,
for the fragment shader, we also have um, support for pulling all of the uh, um, frame buffers as well as any sort of, uh, so this is the frame buffer image, the final frame buffer image. Um, we can scale the image based on uh, size and stuff. Um, we also show all, or pull down all of the uh, like sample attachments and stuff like that. So you get textures and, and what, what you would expect to. Um, we, we do show what the uh, descriptors were bound for that stuff. Um, for shader editing, uh, we do dump all of the shaders via GFXR and um, uh, cross compile those to uh, currently Spear V assembly, uh, GLSL and HLSL. Uh, we will be supporting slang in the future, um, but, and we do support um, multiple cross compilers and uh, shader compilers for compiling back to Spear V uh, via our, our shader editor. So in this case, um, I have the baseline shader, which uh, is here. Um, if I were to make a change to this or edit it, um, it creates a new version. And uh, if you were to save it, it tries to compile it immediately. Um, let's pause this for a second. Um, and in my first, my version one that I create, I just simply changed the, uh, it's kind of hard to see here, but I changed the uh, final output color uh, from the, the um, normal, like the, the uh, normal base color that was normally applied to the albedo uh, to change it to render the normal data. Um, so then we can do something like uh, right click where I've done here and open uh, uh, or create a new replay. So um, again, it won't show the, the actual replay process itself, but the important bit here is uh, when you do a replay, uh, you get this window, this context window up here, which allows you to kind of change what you're going to capture for that replay. Um, you can change your Profeto, Profeto settings, uh, rename it, what, what, what you need to. Um, and then additionally, you can, uh, under the shader modules here, you can choose which shaders you want to uh, include in the replay uh, to override the original shader uh, that was used. Um, so I, I'm going to use my version one here, and as you'll see, that when I uh, when I get the data back from the replay, uh, that the content is now rendering using the normal colors, and we get uh, screenshots again for that. Um, all of the uh, you know all the same frame navigation stuff works for the the replays. Um, we don't necessarily display uh, in our default profile uh, some of the uh, additional like application tracks because they're not really relevant under a GFXR replay. Um, but all of the combined tracks that you've configured, uh, they do their, their profile or their um, uh, application wide. So you don't have to rebuild them. You can just re-pin them. Um, now, additionally, uh, once you have multiple replays, so in this case, I created a replay of the original capture uh, using all the original shaders and then a replay using my modified shader. Um, I can select both of those replays in my project, right click and perform a comparison view. And that's what this is going to do. Um, so you can see here, we actually now have two timelines on the bottom uh, and two Profeto views. And uh, we can expand these so we can see what is in each one of them. And you can see on the top is the, the original trace and then the bottom is the uh, modified version. Uh, so we think that this is very useful for um, doing experimentations. And you can see that the timelines stay in sync. Uh, we're working on additional ways in which these uh, tracks can be synchronized to each other um, on what different types of events or completely like unlocking them so you can move around. Um, and again, the combination tracks are available in this uh, state as well. So. Uh, and of course, if you set up your view, like I'm pinning uh, additional tracks here, um, if you close this comparison and you reopen it, it will save this widget state and it re reapplies all of your uh, modifi modifications or configurations. End of the, yep, I think that's the end of the video. So, let's see. So um, we are where we are. Where are we at now, right? Um, we are, you know, based on the demo, uh, we feel like our, our baseline implementations uh, kind of at a point where we are starting to look for feedback. Um, and uh, what we're looking for are uh, other companies, um, groups, uh, game developers uh, who are interested in providing that feedback. Um, you know, uh, uh, trying this out. Um, you know, running interesting pipelines or samples on it, um, and you know letting us know what works, what doesn't, uh, and what would be useful for you in the future. Um, so uh, this QR code here, uh, you can sign up for our uh, early access program. And uh, you know, we, we really wanna get, get feedback from you. Um, we are also looking at uh, like some of the other things we are, are looking to do um, is you know, reduce some of the workflow uh, like pain points and stuff like that too. Um, and we are looking to also add additional functionality for things like ray tracing and uh, other, other aspects of the, the API. Um, 
So, you know, come talk with us and we can, you know, iterate on those things or uh, discuss those things further. So, yeah, um, we do plan on open sourcing this uh, once uh, it, we're through our early access program. Um, so at that point, then uh, we'll open it up to additional developers uh, in the ecosystem. And uh, we hope to, you know, make this the best tool that we can for the, the ecosystem. And that's really it. So I hope, again, I hope you all had a great work on it. Do I know if you have questions? Let me know. Just shy question. What is the outlook for desktop support? The what? What is the <laughs> outlook for desktop support? Right. So um, Perfetto <laughs> currently works on Linux. And we currently we also have uh, use cases where we need Linux support. So that's going to be our first target outside of Android. Um, but we do intend on supporting uh, desktop support. So you just mentioned plugins. So how, it, how is it is for a particular vendor to go there and plug some custom vendor specific metrics? So, or... so the way we've um, developed our backend uh, support is to, um, or every data stream is basically like a, a separate contributor. Um, so if there is additional data sources that you need, uh, we can kind of build a uh, an extension for that. Um, and then uh, on top of that, like, um, uh, Perfetto is a fairly open platform. So if you can inject data into a Perfetto stream using the Perfetto API uh, in your, either in your engine or uh, driver level, then um, that's going to automatically end up in the Perfetto uh, trace itself. So um, you can build it that way. Uh, Perfetto configurations also allow for derived tracks. So if you need to do some sort of analysis, you could modify the Perfetto configuration even as like without any modifications to uh, our, our profiler um, and, and add data that way. Uh, any chance we can have a headless version so we can do um, automated profiling in a continuous integration pipeline? Automated. Um, so we are working on uh, a headless uh, API for uh, doing the data collection itself, uh, performing uh, captures. Um, and so uh, we're also working on um, basically being able to, to host these things on, on like uh, uh, remote machines. Right. So you can, if you have a, if you have like a, a device lab, then you'd be able to configure it to be able to, you know, run remotely, like SSH. Mm -hmm. um, the graphics strip that's at the bottom, maybe what's the benefit of that versus using traditional tooling like Perfetto separately and, um, mm -hmm. GFXR separately. I mean, a uh, picture's worth a thousand words, I guess. You know, um, you know. So, like when you're looking at your the the output of a capture, right? You can see hitching from frame to frame. You can see like you know lag and stuff like that. So, um, being able to just quickly identify the the part of the trace that was the problem, because a lot of times when uh, like workload engineers or, or QA um, when they're looking for bugs, right? They're they're just playing their game and then they see something and they try to capture the data immediately, right? And uh, or they'll capture for a long time and then you have a very large trace and you need to kind of narrow down where that is. So the easiest way to do that is to visually look uh, as to, you know, like, oh, I know I was in this part of the game when I saw that hitching. So that's where the part of the game is. I'm going to, again, make a slice that's like kind of that section. And now I only need to analyze like 20 frames instead of 2,000. Okay, any other questions? If not, I think a big round of applause for our last speaker. Okay, thank you. Thank you.